Hey there, uh, my name's Rob. I am a Virgo. Uh, I'm about five foot nine. To, oh, whoop, sorry, uh, reading from the wrong script. Uh, I'm Rob Cohe, uh, technical evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about skeletal modeling techniques. Um, hopefully, everybody thought that was funny. Uh, maybe you didn't, but either way. Um, you logged in to see some cool inventor stuff and I'm going to show you some cool inventor stuff. So here what I've got is um, uh, a modeling technique that I, uh, that I like to refer to as skeletal modeling. Um, essentially the, uh, the technique is based upon information extracted from a single file. So here um, I'm going to start a new part file and you can see that I'm going to typically change the sheet metal uh, rules. I want to manage thickness and so on and so forth but I've got over a hundred different components that need to go into this particular assembly I want them all to have the uniform thickness and the geometry of the other relies heavily on geometry of other parts so here's an example where I can put all that geometry in a single part as surface information and then essentially break out each of the individual components from those surfaces um, very efficient way of working. Uh, you know, certainly when you make changes, it's going to matriculate down to all the other uh, individual part files. So here, what I'm doing is uh, is I'm bringing in um, that part as a as a base component through Inventor's derived co component functionality. Take that surface, I'll thicken it, and I'll reference the thickness that was brought forward as a parameter from my base part. So again, continually going back to that, uh, that, that base part for its information, that way I only have one point uh, of reference to manage um, any number of individual components. In this case, uh, again, the full assembly is going to be about 100, 100 components. So I'll take that out, thicken it, uh, use Inventor Sheet Metal Tools to flatten it out. Um, I can DXF that out to put out to a, uh, to a nesting application so I can get my burn pattern uh, created. So. Um, I'll save that out and I've got to do another one so I might as well just start with this one so I'll save as my next part and real quick just pick a different surface from the same base component to create my next part from so I'll just grab the next surface that's uh, that seems reasonable scroll down here a little bit choose that surface and then again go ahead and add some thickness to it based upon my sheet metal parameters that I brought over from my base part turn off some vis visibility here flatten it out and I'll be good to go okay so I've got two components here for this 100 150 part uh, assembly, this, this this main truss structure. Now, to put all these together, since I used a, a skeletal modeling technique, their origins are going to be the same. So when you have really complex um, in resulting part geometry, if you will, uh, it, constraining those is, is, is very difficult. And to do it over and over and over again, each time you bring in a component, um, when you've already essentially defined the relationships between the components with your skeletal model, I'm going to use the skeletal part as my base component in this assembly. So I'll just go in, place the skeletal, uh, this, uh, the skeletal part, bring in a couple components, and all I have to do is flush up all of the origins. So the, uh, the YZs, the XZs, the XYs, like so, and I didn't necessarily have to do a face-to-face, -face, a point-to-point, -point, or anything like that that you typically have to do with constraining. Um, rather, I just used the origin planes since the origin planes were the same because I used a skeletal part as my base component and all my components. So here again, I'll do the same thing. Bring another part in and I'll manually do a flush constraint between all the origin planes. Now, this sounds a lot like when you're reading the back of a bottle of shampoo. It's it's rinse, lather, repeat, rinse, lather, repeat, rinse, lather, repeat. Well, you know, you'd have to do that 108 different times in this particular assembly. So, I reached out to my buddy Brian Eakins uh, over in Lake Oswego, and I said, "Look, I don't want to have to uh, match the origins every single time I do this 
for this particular assembly or any time I use skeletal modeling as a modeling technique. So do you have anything for me? And of course he did. Uh, and so here I'm going to bring in all of the components all at once. You can see I've got a number of components and they're just spread out randomly within this assembly. So I'm going to go into my tool bag, go into my VBA editor, and I'm going to launch this little piece of code that Brian wrote for me called match origin. Now it's really not that complex when, when, when you go to read through it. Um, pretty easy to set up. But essentially I'm just going to load this, go to my macros. Well, first I have to select the base component and then all the other components because that's how he set up the macro for me. So I'll select the first one, I'll select all the other ones, go to my macro button and run the macro and it's creating all of the flush conditions for me on all the origins. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab another cup of coffee. Uh, Brian's pretty much done all the hard work for me, and uh, boy, this is sure this is nice. I, I, I'm 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 sitting back here right now, kicked back, got my feet on the table. I'm going to go get some coffee. So uh, so think about this. Think about how you you'd apply this, and I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Feel free to comment on it. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.